How are we doing people? Before I get started as always, disclaimer, this video is protected under the Fair Use Act, it's an educational video, and all credit for the original clip goes to the rightful owners, Matchroom Sport, Sky Sport, Boxing, whoever else. As you can see on screen, there is Lawrence Ocoli in his first world title fight against Christoph Glavaski. And I figured seeing as uh, Lawrence Ocoli is fighting this weekend, it'd be a good opportunity to do a little piece on him. And this is the first time I've watched this fight in its entirety since it happened. And uh, I spotted an interesting thing regarding the knockout, um, something that I think many people overlooked. And uh, so that's what we're going to be covering today. And uh, Lawrence Colley, for those who don't know, is someone who on the British boxing scene has come under a lot of criticism pretty much since day one of his professional career. Um, a lot of the criticism, though, is is warranted. He's someone who has failed to impress, and mostly early on, he was responsible for some quite horrendous fights. He fell into a bad habit of neutralising his opponent purely from holding, and um, in one of his fights, the Matty Askin fight, many people, including myself, felt his holding was so excessive that he should have been disqualified. So this is someone who, as I say, has uh, been the target of a lot of criticism, a lot of valid criticism, but he now finds himself on a quite steady and impressive trajectory of development. And so this, as you know, this video will be covering some of the subtleties, which I, I love to cover because to quote Barry Robinson, who was coaching Lawrence O'Colley for a certain time, small things, all things. Boxing, like many sports and many skills, it's a culmination of loads of little aspects and factors and skills that come together to make a great performance. And so to get stra uh, straight into the study, we have uh, Christoph Glavaski here. And if you watch the fight, you'll see that he spent a lot of his time on the back foot. And he he almost, he elected to go there. He was there voluntarily. Of course, there was some lead hand action from Lawrence O'Colley, but uh, I, I think based on what I saw, Christoph Glavaski was anticipating right the right hand from Lawrence O'Colley. And as such, he was kind of primed on the back foot, waiting for that shot to come and him ready to counter with his own left. Not the best strategy, um, quite amateurish almost, or just very low level. But um, uh, the moral of the story is Glavaski found himself, uh, for the vast majority of the fight, on the back foot. As he's advancing on Lawrence O'Colley here, you can see he's making his way to the front foot. And anyone who's watched my videos, any previous studies, you'll know that. I've outlined how this is a very rewarding, but very dangerous position. Some people are probably sick of hearing me say that, but it's true. And we can see that here, Christoph Glavaski gets to this position. Looks like he has some decent biomechanics. Doesn't look like he's fighting his body too much, so he has a good degree of control. Could be altered in some uh, certain aspects, but we're not going to cover that today. But what we see is he's come from just this kind of neutral back position into the front foot and he hasn't really done his due diligence and he's left a lot to chance because he hasn't made much of an attempt to ask questions of Lawrence O'Colley and find out how O'Colley's going to react. Luckily though, for, I say luckily, uh, Lawrence O'Colley doesn't attack. He just kind of uses this kind of probing shot here just to remind Christoph Glavaski that moving there isn't going to be free and we can see very rhythmically uh, Christoph Glavaski has moved back to this this is the position I'm talking about this is the back foot position that Glavaski was in for most of the fight and we can see what he's doing here is as he shifts his weight backwards that loads his weight onto the back leg and very um, clearly we can see he's using that unloaded lead leg to try and get lead foot dominance on Lawrence O'Colley. Still a bit even here, Very uh, nobody seems to have much of an advantage in the lead foot. 
Uh, for those who don't know, lead foot dominance is something that you typically want to uh, strive to achieve over someone who is the opposite stance to you. So regardless of whether you're an orthodox or you're a southpaw, if you're fighting against someone who is a different stance to you, you want to aim to uh, capture that position, that lead foot position. And so we can see here that uh, Glavaski has gone into the back foot position, very low down, trying to almost hide in his boxing stance, trying to really tuck himself away, bring himself as far away as possible from a collie. But then we can see very rhythmically once again, he comes back into the front foot. A collie does the same thing. And at this point, when you're in the ring, you're, well, let me not say, it's not a given, but you want to develop an ability to read timings and read rhythms and so that's why uh, the ability to catch onto a rhythm and a pattern is very important in boxing because human beings are habitual creatures and so habit typically lends itself to pattern and a pattern can be exploited and so we've seen uh, Glavaski go forward back forward where's he likely to go next you guessed it backwards and so we've seen that he's actually started to move backwards and uh okoli sees this as an opportune time to land his right hand and so we can see that through the jab he's taken a step getting lead foot dominance and so what glavaski has tried to do lawrence okoli has clocked on and done it before him because he understands where he has an idea at least where glavaski is going controls him on the way back to make sure that okay Glavaski looks as if he's going to go back let me ensure that he goes back so that's what he did with the left hand and then he just has um uh Glavaski in pole position to get smashed with the right hand bang it happens and it seems very simple but this takes skill and so credit to Lawrence Okoli because he clearly understands uh, the importance of rhythm and he's able to clock onto these certain patterns but also he understands that certain punches fit certain um, positions better and so if we just go back and we can see uh, I'll let it play in real time forward back forward force him back land the right hand just like that and so this is very impressive stuff from Okoli because there have been plenty of fighters to do this in the past, but you have to consider Lawrence Okoli's lack of experience and how fast he's developed over a relatively short space of time. So um, I this is I, I don't think going to have uh, this is no means uh, by no means uh, prediction for his fight this weekend, but I just wanted to do this piece as a little bit of appreciation. For Lawrence Okoli, who I do feel is starting to blossom as a fighter, showing some subtle understanding of rhythm and timing, control, and also positioning as well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's entertaining and insightful. We're, we're growing the channel, guys, so thank you so much. As always, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do, please do so. If you have subscribed, please uh, send this video on to anyone who you think will enjoy it or benefit from it. If you want to discuss this in the comments, please do so. Let me know what your thoughts are on this little scenario here and Lawrence Acoli's ability and where do you think he's going. Also, recommendations. I'm always taking recommendations, guys, so don't be shy. But that's all for me today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.